So I guess as a young receiver, like watching film, you, you want to like it take first of all, the thing I understand is it takes time. Like you have to put hours in to understand this. Like I do these weekly scouting reports for my NFL athletes um, on the corners they're going to face. It takes me 15 to 20 hours every week watching film to, to digest the necessary information to have an understanding of really how they play. Um, and I think what you got to understand is like you start broad with kind of their playing style, their athletic abilities, things like that. But then, but then you have to get very situational to both how the defense plays and how the individual plays because he, a, a cornerback's going to play coverage differently on third down than he does on first down, just like a defense is going to make different calls. So like at first you want to start very broad. Um, you know, I'll start off just like watching one or two games all the way full, right? And just like get a picture of like what are their base coverages, meaning like, you know, just like offensive coordinators have favorite plays, um, defensive coordinators have favorite calls, and and, it, and it's all tendency based, right? Like like as a as a play as an offensive play caller, you have a sheet that says first and ten, it says second and seven to ten, it says second and four to six. Like it's broken up by down and distance, and you're not just calling these plays on the fly. You're 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 spending all week preparing, scouting that individual. You're spending a full half day, right, looking at different second down scenarios, and then and then looking at the defense they call, choosing the plays you want, right? The defense is doing the reverse, so they have. They have their base calls. Like they, they on first and second down, you know, they're an 80% cover four team. So like you watch a game through and you kind of realize like, all right, they're a big cover four team. Okay, also on, and when you're looking for their base coverages, you eliminate some of the situations that would alter their, their calls, right? So, so you eliminate third down, you eliminate red zone, you eliminate some of those other situations and you just look at the base situations, first and second down in normal field territories and just assess them, figure out what, what, is, what are their calls that they like in the normal situations, normal downs. Um, so I'll, I'll watch that and then you figure out, okay, they're a cover four team, they'll play cover six to this. And then as you figure out kind of what their calls are, then you break it down even further. So, okay, they're 80% this coverage, 12% this coverage, whatever. Then you break it down further and you realize, okay, they're adjusting their call to different personnel. Every time 21 personnel, two backs, one tight end is on the field, they change it. Or, they, they switch something different to 11 personnel, or, or maybe they have formational adjustments that when you're in two by two, they play this coverage. When you go to three by one, sure, they're a cover four team, but now they just make a slight adjustment to that base coverage to, to, to change the way they defend three by one. So you're just looking for all these nuances and you're not trying to force it, right? Like you're not trying to like, like you're just assessing the information in front of you. And I think uh, the, a huge mistake players make when they watch film is they think there's some like puzzle or some secret and like, it is a bit of a puzzle, but it's just like watching all the film and just like assessing the information. Like you're not, you're not trying to make up your own story. And I think kids look at it and feel like they have to like make up their own story, tell some sort of secret. Um, but so I think it's, it's, again, you start very general, you get a feel for who they are. You get a feel for the corners. How do they play? Are they, is he a handsy guy in press coverage? Is he aggressive? Does he inch back and give you space? Does he, is he more comfortable playing loose coverage? Like just get a, an overall understanding of how they play. And then you really start to look at it by situation, right? So you, and then you start to look at, okay, what are their calls on first and second down? Boom, we talked about that. Then I look at all their third downs and I figure out, okay, what are their, what are their go-to calls now on third down? Because the same thing again, if it's a two-minute drill for an offense, I have my favorite four or five play calls. You got to figure out when it's nut-cutting time, what is, their, what is going to be their go-to call? Because then that tells you if the game gets rough, what to expect the rest of the game. So like there's some teams where, sure, on first and second down, they'll play a lot of cover four, uh, you know, they, they'll, or they'll, they'll play, you know, a lot of like two high zone, whatever. But then when it's nut cutting time, when they got to make it a stop, they're playing one high man to man press coverage. So then, you know, like, all right, sure. All this zone coverage stuff is cute, but I really like to win the game. I got to be prepared to, to win my one-on-one -on -one matchup and press coverage. Like these are the kind of situations you're trying to figure out, prepare yourself for. And again, like just kind of stepping back and thinking about logically, like, like what's the purpose of watching film? The purpose of watching film is to slow the game down it is to accumulate information. That's going to help us make decisions on the field. Right to 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 it's to get a feeling for for the defense's tendencies. How do they align in this coverage versus that coverage? Right, like the same way again. If I'm running a speed out, a res, uh, my receiver coach tells me to align two yards inside the numbers because I have to break out. Whereas if I'm running a slant, my receiver's coach tells me to run two yards outside the numbers because I have to break in. Right, I have alignment. So does the defense. So you're watching film as you're looking at these situations. Right, as I'm figuring out they play this coverage in this situation, this coverage in that situation. Right? Once you have an idea of what to expect in each situation, who they are, then you want to figure out how do I tell the difference between each coverage. Right? So they play cover four, they play cover two. Right? 
their pl the, the players on defense have different jobs in those coverages, so they're going to align in different places to accomplish those jobs, just like I explained, similar to what I explained with where you line for routes. So if I'm a linebacker, right, and, and I guess to step back, you know, a, a, another part of this that we've talked about before, but what you're looking at, right, as you're looking at the whole picture, right, then you're looking at the individual, but when you're assessing coverages to your side, you're really looking at, you're, you're trying to identify three guys, your coverage triangle. So that's you, the corner, the linebacker, the safety to your side, right? So you want to assess, so those guys, the way, where they align on the field, again, their alignments are going to play off each other. They're going to align in specific places to do their job. So if, if the ball's in here, a, a, a linebacker in cover two, his job is to defend the hook to curl area in here. So that means if I'm the receiver here, he's likely going to align inside of me because he, his job is to wall me off and prevent me from getting inside. So to do his job, and wall me off, he can't align out here. Because if his job is to prevent me from going to the middle, he aligns head up, he's giving me a clear path, his job is screwed, and, and there's a huge vulnerability in the defense. So he can't, he has to align here to do his job. On the reverse, now if it's cover four, right, where he goes from a wall player to now he's the flat player. His job in the zone is this corner's backing off, this safety's backing off, he's the flat player here, right? So now he has to be a little wider. He can't defend, if the number one receiver runs a hitch route, he can't defend that route from all the way in here. So he has to align wider. Right, and so there's all these little nuances, same with the safety, like a cover two safety who has to play up over the top, has to get wider before the ball is snapped to do his job. And so you watch film, and, there's, and, and the other thing people think is that, is that they think that, they think that um, there's these universal coverage laws. Like sure, there are these general points of a linebacker should align inside leverage to be a wall player, should bump further out if he wants to play the flat, right? But every team plays coverage differently. Like the Saints are going to play coverage, play cover two differently than the Bucks, play cover two differently than the Giants. Like so, every week that's the puzzle is not figure, it, it, It's figuring out how does this team play coverage. That's why it's not as hard as people think. It's not you're not memorizing these laws and applying them. It's just how does this team play cover two? What are their tendencies? And you just watch. If you watch 20 cover two reps and you watch 20 cover four reps, the answers are going to just reveal themselves to you. There's going to be distinct differences in how the players align. That if you're paying attention and tracking them, whatever you got to do to notice the differences, like it, the information is going to present themselves to you. And then you just try to make it simple. So you're not on the field thinking about 12 different things. You've watched all the film. You've spent your 15, 20 hours in the week preparing. And then you come out and you say, okay, like those tendencies I thought did hold up. Like this corner always aligns outside leverage when he's playing cover two. This safety, there, there's going to be things that reveal themselves that then you can, you can rely on. And, th and now you get up to the line and a slant's called. And you know that running a slant in cover four is very different than running it in cover two, very different than if they rotate the coverage late to play cover three, right? All these things are going to alter the way you need to execute your job. If we don't know that these coverage changes are coming, we don't know what to expect, then we're just kind of running around like chickens with our head cut off figuring out as we go. We want to have a plan at the line of scrimmage, um, you know, so you, you, you kind of know what your route is, you see the coverage, you, you compare what you're seeing in front of you to everything you've seen on film. And then you're, you're asking yourself, all right, how does what I'm seeing in front of me affect my job? And you, you adjust it. And again, all that film study, all that preparation allows you to make these split-second decisions so that while the quarterback's pointing the mic and saying, down set hike, you've got four seconds to assess all this and make fast fucking decisions. And all that preparation goes into it. Um, so, you know, that's really like the team aspect. And then like you dive even deeper into the individuals. Like I'll, I'll watch... You know, I'll, I'll cut up all the individual cut-ups, watch, watch the, the, the individual play press coverage, watch them play loose coverage. Give, give, I'll give my, my players some sort of tendency, like, hey, you can expect loose coverage in these situations, press coverage in these situations, but it, it's not even worth them trying to think of their 80% here. Like, it's just like, all right, when you see press, here's what to be prepared for. When you see loose, here's how they play it. A lot of the, ten, a lot of the things you have to keep in mind are the same because most corners are the same. They're as good as you allow them to be because, like you always hear me say, like, DB should never cover you because um, you're fully in control, but, but you know, then I, I'll look at how did this player, so I'll look at all the big gains versus player. How did he get beat? In the, it, you know, you, or, or watch a bunch of individual routes. So watch, him, watch 12 different examples of a slant route versus him. If there's five examples where the, where the receiver won, there's probably something in common that all those routes, something that all those routes had in common that allowed them to win. So that's a huge key. Hey, when you're running a slant, this trait helps you get open versus this individual. That's how specific it is. There's no carryover the next week. You know what I'm saying? Same thing, whereas the Buffalo Bills play cover four with these tendencies. There's no carryover to the next week. There's no reason why there would be carryover. Like those, that staff teaches it completely different. That corner plays coverage completely different. So it's, it's, a, it's, again, just assessing the play style, assessing the tendencies each and every week, and figuring out a system for yourself 
where you're able to take all this information and break it down into a few digestible points that, that are kind of buzzwords for you you can think about. So like, I'm um, trying like Malcolm Butler. We just played against Malcolm Butler for the Titans and I was scouting him. He's someone who's very vulnerable to the second move. So when you, when you give him one move in line of scrimmage, he's gonna inch back, but then he'll chase you. So you give him one move, attack an angle, he'll chase you. If you just think the route's over, then he'll, he'll, he'll cover you up. If you give him one move, chase you, then give him another move, he's very vulnerable. But so something like, like something I gave my athlete that was very digestible is Malcolm Butler's vulnerable to the second move. And then he beat him for a double move for like 40 yards. So like there's, there's those type of little things is, all right, cover two, the, what's the cover two indicator? Usually there's one thing you're keying in on. The weak side safety always gets to the hash for cover two. He stays inside. The, like you're trying, to think, you're trying to break down all these things. Coaches need to think about all the little details. Coaches need to understand he's 74% to this formation, 82% to that formation because we want to, they need to call the right play. But as players, we can't think about all that shit. It's, it's, it's what is all that information? I spent all week deciphering the puzzle and how do I boil it down into a few points that allow me to play fast. I see number 21 aligned in front of me in press coverage. I know he's going to inch back on the first move. I can beat him on the second move. I see number 33, you know, playing press coverage. I know that he's really aggressive with his hands. If I eat up space, move the line of scrimmage, give him a move. Like, like you have these little things you think about so that then you, for another thing with the Titans, right? We, we said if you're ever lined up against a true linebacker, anytime you're lined up against a true linebacker, not, not a nickel, not another DB, a guy wearing the 50s numbers, he's going to try to collision you and be really, really aggressive because he knows he can't run with you. Sanu lines up against a true linebacker. Goes up to him, the kid tries to collision him, he, Sanu avoids him on a short post, he's wide open 15 yards. So it's like, but again, it, what, he wasn't thinking about anything else other than, oh, here's a true linebacker, I know he's gonna try, like you made it very simple. Sure, we could have talked about all the coverage things, the reasons why, because he has this responsibility and this cut, none of that shit matters. All that matters is, here's number 54, I know his tendency because of the 20 hours of film allowed me to find clarity in that situation, which results in a 15 yard catch in the first night. That's what we're doing it for. And for receivers, we don't have control over when those opportunities come, right? Like, even if I get thrown the ball 15 times a game, I don't know when those targets are coming. I can't control when the coach calls a play for me, when the O-line is going to hold up the protection, when the quarterback's going to make the right read and the right throw. So I have to just, I have to be prepared for every opportunity to, to be the, the one that where I'm going to get the ball and have the most clarity I can. Take all this information so I can play fast, adjust my job to the coverage in front of me, and, and maximize that opportunity. Right? Like if I wasn't prepared for that linebacker being handsy with me and that was the time the quarterback was looking my way and I let him grab me up, I may not get another opportunity the rest of the game. But now because I made that play, quarterback's looking for me again and that's how you accumulate these things. Um, and, and you know, that's why coverage recognition is so important and, and the way, again, the way you prepare. Like, like this is talking about 15, 20 hours a week of watching the games over and over, breaking it up by cut up over and over, breaking it up by situation over and over, by how do they defend in the red zone is a whole nother, is a whole nother story, right? And then, but it's all of these things and, and it's finding a way to organize it for yourself. The way I come to these conclusions is different than the way Muhammad Sanu does. It's different the way that another coach does. But all that matters is that it makes sense to you in the end and you're able to play fast and, and, and you're not, this information isn't slowing you down. It's, it's, it, this information isn't slowing you down, it's slowing the game down. Right? We don't want it to paralyze us and make us, I'm thinking about a million things and I forget to do the basics. It's that it's making it simpler for me. That I know, I, I spent all this time watching film to find one clear exact tendency so that when that opportunity presents itself to me on the field, it's a walk in the park because I've, I've, I've visualized it 20 times during the week. I've, I went over it in practice. Once the game comes, that's, that's the fun part. But, but if, if you, you, don't, you want to try to make it so that the first time you're in the situation on game day, or, or once you see the situation on game day, it's not the first time you've been in that situation. You've at least visualized it through your head. You've at least walked through it. You've at least, at, at least you know, had, had some experience where, where it's, it's familiar to you. And that's what you're going for during the week is, is figure out who they are, make it digestible for yourself so that when, when you're out there in a situation on the field, it's a familiar situation. You can play fast and execute your job.